from the gospel we just read, you see how it relates to our theme for today. The theme says, love, God's wondrous gift to man. And in verse 9, he was saying that it is God's joy that you will have joy. God is saying that somebody here, he will make you like a wondrous gift. You will become a wonder. Enough is enough of just being that Chinelo or that Mike or that Samuel. You are going to be something different. David had to become what he became because God touched him. Somebody here will be a big king. Somebody here will be a big engineer. Somebody here will be a a big medical doctor. Somebody here will be a great preacher. I, I, this, I, mean, no, I thought this one would have. <laughs> eh? So God's wondrous gift is that you become a wonder. I want you to just pray the prayer and say, God, please make me a wonder. Simple. God, please make me a wonder. Desire it. And I tell you how you get there. Desire it. I'll tell you how you get there as quickly as I can. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you that you have brought us to your house and you have fed us with your body and blood. We thank you because despite every situation, we know that the devil had never wanted us to have this full good time with you. But because you have released us unto this, victory has become our portion. Papa, our singular asking today is that as we are living here, anybody that came here ordinary will go like a wonder. God will make you that wonder. Your generation will point at you and say, yes, God dropped this wonder amongst us. Father, even in the shortest possible time, speak to your people. Give us the word we require for today. Bless us immensely, for we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Oh. Amen. Please, can we just sit down? So, these people here are not even hearing. I thought one microphone was made to face them. There is no microphone facing them. I mean, uh, Speaker. There is speaker there. Where is the speaker? Ah. Uh, eh. This one a feedback now. Feedback though they throw go far. Just for people who are close. I greet all of you in Jesus' name. Oh. I welcome you to your father's house. After yesterday's journey, let me tell some people who are who went for the uh, outing program yesterday. Just wave to Christ. Let me see. Whether, eh? All the choristers, that's why they missed all the hymns. So. <laughs> eh? And very few people. Why few of you? So all these people we saw here yesterday, we are from other churches. Very few of us. Okay, for the few of us and the choristers that went, people kept me awake. By 10.30, we are still praying. 11, hey, is this how? Eh? But I could not sleep until I got the information that midnight, that it was just go slow. 
and that you people were enjoying yourself, enjoying yourself, enjoying yourself, you didn't even reach on time. Because you were here. The people that went for other programs even left before you. You were hanging around. Uh, wearing trousers and arguing with the uh, mothers who came to clean the church. Eh? And they were saying, they were saying that uh, if we don't allow people who wear trousers to even come and pick their children during school hours, we don't allow trousers. We have uh, banners everywhere in the church. Then a new church will come and match with trousers, even into our uh, altar. Hey! But is the matter trouser? I know you say no. <laughs> I know you say no. Because the thing among you is, I did it too. I was always in Igbo, we used to say, oh, Kadinobi. Oh, Kadinobi. If one year, I try to see Dada. Eh? Going to smoke Igbo with torn trousers. I said, oh, Kadinobi. Eh? You see somebody dressed the same way like a prostitute. No difference. And she will tell you, I'm a born again Christian. That is not what I'm speaking about this morning. As a father, as a father will keep talking, talking, talking. It is well. Today is a day of blessing for somebody. And like I told you, the theme for this service is love, God's wondrous gift to man. And it's taken from John chapter 15, verses 5 to 11, where we just read as our gospel. And you find that it is God's joy that we abide in his love. That is what the passage is telling us. Verse 7 says specifically, if you abide and he abides in you, then ask whatever you desire. For me, unlike every Igbo man, I don't know whether there's anybody here that is not Igbo or you don't have Igbo blood. But if you have Igbo blood, what that blood speaks inside you is blood of achievement, achievement, achievement. What do you achieve? What do you achieve by worshipping God? What do you achieve by going to church? What do you achieve by deciding I'll be a medical doctor? And that achievement is that verse 7. If you abide in me, whatever you ask, if God has left us on this earth and we still have to ask to get what we want, then something is damn very serious. If you look at verse 8 of that passage, John chapter 15 verse 8, it tells us that by this our act of being attached to God, of staying in his love, of asking him for things to do for us, that God will be glorified. He has a reason for asking us to ask him. We, every day you read in WhatsApp, where they are saying, let preachers stop preaching about uh, speak it and grab it. That is what is making the country. People are not working hard. Uh, work hard first. As you are working hard, if you don't speak it, the heavens will not release it for you. There are others who use other means of speaking. And it's working for him here on earth. But it is not achieving for them anything for the eventual time to come. But in, li in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have one, life to come, and two, life here. So, God's wondrous gift, God has told me to tell somebody here, that that will make you become a wonder, right here on earth. And on the last day, you make heaven. Can I hear amen to that? If you follow me to Psalm chapter 77, Psalm 77, verse 14 says, You are the God who does wonders. The man David was noted for knowing and having the mind of God at all times. 
He will speak the innermost things. And one of the innermost things about God is to understand that God does wonders. He works out wonders. When you think that things are not certain and you call on him, people have different testimonies. I loaded some testimonies here. But one or two things made me begin to say, ah, it's not, and I did not carry them any further. Because one of the wonder is that I started preparing for this uh, youth church by Monday, Tuesday. And it came to me that I had asked one of our lay readers, one of our able old lay readers, who have been finding, looking for opportunity for him to come and minister to the youth church. Because I happen to know him, we were in the same secondary school long before you were born. And we knew he had this particular gift. I've watched him since then. I, I thought that by now, he would have even been a bishop or archdeacon or something. But God took him in his own direction. He's a businessman. He is a lay reader. But there is a particular quality he has. And I wanted him to display that quality here today. If you look at your bulletin, you see that I'm not supposed to be the preacher. His name is there. He has this quality that if he stands here in the next 40 minutes with microphone, he will be talking and Bible passages will be flowing out. We have tried him here and there, tried to copy, and we copied 120 Bible passages from a man standing and ministering. And he looks like an ordinary man. Is somebody following me? So, I wanted him to do the wonders. So, he will encourage you people to see the wonders in what God can deposit in different people. But the wonder th wonderful thing happened that by Friday night, he couldn't sleep. Saturday morning, he went to hospital. And doctors told him never to get up from bed until Tuesday. Is somebody following this story? So, wonders will continue to happen. If you take on your own, you see yours. When God promises wonder, he will not stop at letting you see wonder. But he will make you a wonder. Let me try to explain this. I read this story in Matthew chapter 5. About, and in other passages of the Bible, the madman of Gadara. You have heard about him. He was so mad that all hope was lost about him. No, they didn't think he would recover again. So they took him to the wilderness and left him there. And people knew that where he was, they say he used, Bible say he used stone to cut himself everywhere. Nobody could come near his vicinity. But that day, the Spirit of God took Jesus. As he was going, people were saying, Ah, the madman, madman, he's very dangerous. I believe people who are following Jesus Christ were running back. But Jesus looked at him and said, That sickness out from you. And this, the Spirit that was occupying him said, Where do we go to, Master? He said, Oh, yeah, pointed to the uh, swine. Easy. That is why Jews don't eat pork meat. He said, because Jesus commanded. And what happened is where I'm going to. The man found immediately that he was naked. He cleaned up himself. I believe he shaved, put on good clothes. And the next thing, he was preaching the good news. He became a wonder. People who knew him were saying, is this not the madman of Gadara? I speak to somebody here today. After your encounter here, Jesus is going to touch you. Amen. That situation that they have been looking at you and calling you ordinary person, you will become a wonder. Amen. That thing you have been doing with effort will come effortlessly today. I have another quick example from the Bible. We all read about the man called Lazarus. He died for four days. Was smelling. When Jesus said, where, where was he late? They were telling Jesus, that place is already smelling. It's, when a man dies and is rotten, he's smelling. 
Which other hope does he have? I don't know what in your situation today that you consider smelling, that you consider is no longer alive, that you are losing hope about. I was talking to somebody last week, a young person. I said sometimes, I don't like to talk to my children about it so much because you may discourage them that people like us will stand and say, ah, today, I have five degrees, including three master's degrees. Five, including three master's degrees. And I'm going for my PhD, which I must get before the end of this year. I've carried this since 2012. I finished my doctoral thesis in 2012. It's to go and submit. That stupid sickness came. You will know about it. Why I have not been able to. You know, when I climbed to this place today, I stood there and thank God again that this year is about the third time I'm climbing up here. When certain sickness attack you, you don't know why for what. But the first thing is for you to have a goal where you are going to. I know Lazarus had his own goal, left and right. But death came. He had a friend in Jesus. And they said for Jesus, they said, your friend is about to die, he's sick. Jesus was occupied with things. That it was when Lazarus was swelling, hope had gone. I don't know what your situation is today. When we started this message, we read from the psalm that these things happen for the glory of God. It is for the glory of God that the delay you have had in your life has occurred. After today, we will begin to glorify God for you. I am speaking what God said I should come and tell you as quickly as possible. As quickly as possible. When Jesus entered the tomb, he called forth with a very loud voice. I read one other person's commentary. He said, Lazarus, come forth. He said, if you did not put the name Lazarus, if you had just come to that tomb, because there are very many people there, and Jesus had just stood there to say, hey, come forth. 50 people would have rushed from death. Anytime the voice of Christ comes, every dead thing in your body will rise. See the wonder of that resurrection. The man got up. Do you know how he came? Because they tied his legs with aquas and the word could not remove the it's not if Christ had wanted. But for people to understand what was happening, is somebody hearing me? He had to give the instruction. Lose him and set him free. They now went to lose what they used in tying his legs. I've come here today to declare to you. The word of God says that thing that has held you will be loosed today in Jesus' name. You are created to be a wonder. Why will you not be that wonder? What is keeping you away from being the wonder? I have lots and lots of testimonies. Lots and lots of them. But there is this one that interests me. I read it somewhere. It said that several years ago, during a crusade in the National Stadium, if I come out here, these people will not be seeing me. And some of them are sleeping. If I stay here, I feel too far away. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm talking about National Stadium. What is this thing? Eh, Bob? Is this Bob? This one will be disco house now. The thing, when I look at it, they turn my head. Eh? Is it because I'm 60 years? Eh? <laughs> they turn my head. This place is not bright, it's dark. This thing should have brightened it. Three bulbs here. Brighten this place. This is a house of God. When we go to disco, we do disco. This thing can come during Christmas season, Abby, when we are decorating for Christmas. I like all these ones too. It's, it's okay the way you see, but don't remove it though. I like it, but it's making us sweat. <laughs> oh my God. How can you come and close window? You would have decorated this thing where window is not now. Leave window for air to pass. 
already the window there is faulty. I don't like this kind of window because it doesn't give even up to 50%. You shift some, shift some. Doesn't give. I like the one that will open. Open everywhere. Air will come. It is well. I'm talking about what happened in National Stadium. Uh It's good. People are reminding me because you know when old people talk, you they will veer off. You remind them. They come back. So they said there was a very big crusade. All those crusades they were doing that time, national study. People would travel from far and near to go and watch what was happening. And one woman came to see. She said she was standing. The person next to her had one kind of boil from the neck. It was so big. Ah, she couldn't remove her eyes from the man. She was looking at it. She said, God, thank you that I'm not like this, Robert. The problem why I carry they're different. Let me face my problem. So he said, during sermon, the preacher was talking. And all of a sudden, this preacher stopped and said, God wants to do so many things. There is somebody here with one boy. They said, it's cancerous in your neck. That boy is disappearing now. That boy is... So the woman said, uh, looked at the man. He said, it looked like this thing just flew away. The next thing, the man started shouting. Making noise, falling on the ground. Wonder walking God. But do you know the testimony was not that the man was uh, the person that carried the testimony more was not the man that they removed the thing from that, that God disappeared the thing from. It was the woman. What happened? The woman, immediately after the, she was so she was thanking God for everything if she can see this miracle face to face. By the time they closed the program, she joined the crowd and started walking home. She walked from there to Anthony Village, about five kilometers from National Stadium. She had reached her house when she saw that she had the key of her vehicle. She drove to that place with her car. So, <laughs> is somebody understanding something? Today, something will happen in your life. Something that will make you become a wonder. Something that will make people looking at you, begin to say, ah, this person, I think there is something else. There is something else about you. Something definitely is happening. When God turns you into a wonder, even skeptics will find it difficult to doubt your testimony because it will be so profound. Have you, are you here? God is asking me to tell you. If you have taken jump, one, two, three. Oruan and Ketoto. This year and Kegatona. This year, with any score you have in jump, you are entering university. Can somebody believe what I'm saying? If you have taken one, two, three. Oruan and Ketoto. My testimony is that I took my first jump in 1976. When Jam came out, we were the first people. 76, some of you. When I'm talking, it's about when your mother was born. Abi? <laughs> so, I took Jam. That time, we came from individual universities to Jam. And they tell you to fill three choices and three schools. First Jam, I refused to fill three. I wrote in this place for one. First choice calls law. Second choice, law. Third choice, I wrote lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know I did that in 76, 77, 78, 79? It was in 98. Five years. It will never happen to anybody here like that in Jesus' name. (laughs) I know why I'm saying this. When I found myself in hospital, in hospital bed in India, and I found I could not even get up. I found I could not urinate. It was my wife that would put... I I wouldn't even know when I would pass a a scripture. But I would just be looking... I could only recognize my wife 
Sometimes there was one doctor that will, one Indian doctor that will come. When he finishes talking, I'll ask my wife. I say, Mommy, this man won your when you fall into certain situation, you find that you cannot help yourself. It's only God that can help you. That situation that you have not been able to help yourself is what I have come here to declare for you. That God in heaven says, today, he's stepping into that situation. I don't know what the situation is, but I have other testimonies I can't begin to go into. I want somebody to just stand on your feet because we are going to pray. We are going to pray. The, wait a I have it written down here. Declaration that God said I should tell somebody. He said, your life will become a perpetual signpost to glorify God. Amen. Let me repeat it. Your life will become a perpetual signpost to glorify God. Amen. I don't know who is this. But you are in dire need of a miracle. Beyond that need, God wants to make you a living wonder. Just because of the glory of his name. Can you think about that area that you feel you have lacked behind? You feel you have not become what you are supposed to be. Can you think of that area where you need the most assistance of the living God? God wants to step into your situation right now. If you can just close your eyes, begin to behold him who is able to do all that he says. This is the season that the Lord wants to turn you into a wonder. Those mouths that had ever mocked you, they will open their mouth to praise you. Begin to talk to God right now. Say, God, your promise is your promise. Turn me into a wonder. Give me that testimony that everybody will say, ha, is this me? Is this me? I want to become an instrument of spreading the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody talk to God. Somebody talk to God. When I was in hospital, I told God, if I ever come out from here, I will stand every time to tell people, I was near death and only you saved me. And I go ahead to say, God, if I come out, everybody I declare life to, that person will have life. Because I have died for everybody. No more sickness. What is drawing you back? What is holding you down? Is it lack of money? Oh, who to pay school fees? It's a small thing, my dear. Is it that you read and read and you can't find B? Not to talk about A. It's a small thing for God. Is it that when you want to read, something will say, move, move, move. Begin waka. Apia go, di konya apia rotare, no, ina bayari. God is stopping it right now. He has told me, come and give my people Father's blessing. Today is a special day. Pray, 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 pray. We are closing right now. We are closing right now. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Our Father and our God, we thank you. Lord, whenever you talk, it is here and amen. Nobody can change it. I see before me 
wonders, wonders upon this earth. Those people thought, those cool people thought that they were going to be ordinary children, ordinary youths. Today you are turning them into wonders. We have had journeys even of people who you moved from their location to a place where they will become wonder. Just like David was, I mean, just like Joseph was moved by his brother selling him. We have had others who have found themselves in Germany where they became wonders not out of their effort, but because you have arranged it. Today I pray for these ones. Somebody here will become a wonder. That lifting will begin today. We cannot control it. It is you that will take care. Do it for us. Let your word never return to you void. But let it achieve that which it has gone out for. Bless your children. Bless us immensely. For we have spoken in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Did you just clap for? Go ahead. Go ahead. told you to stop. Be clapping or be clapping. Clap, clap, clap now. Tell him, get on and say it. That is your worship. Let it come from the bottom of your heart. He is your reason for being alive today. There are so many people who saw what you saw yesterday and they just could not make it. Worship him for he has let you, he has given you that even this day. Papa, I see him arising for somebody this hour. I see the heavens opening and saying, Who, who is this? Who is this? Who is this? St. Paul's Church, the new church of St. Paul's, Okafa, getting the attention of the heavens.
I see somebody being touched. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. For in Jesus' mighty name, we worship. <laughs>